All right, I am gonna teach you how to make a hair mod for Mass Effect. Um, we're not gonna make hair from scratch, we're just gonna pour it in the hairs from Skyrim. So, here we go. You want to first open up your 3DX Max, um, set up your viewport configuration so that you're only looking at one box. There we go. Then you want to go up here and run your Actor X importer script so that you can import PSKs for Mass Effect. Um, right now I'm going to import the head, which I've already set up for FemShep, and it's going to load. I'm going to set it up so that I can see it head on, change the settings to perspective, and then you can't see this right now, but I'm scrolling out on my mouse wheel so that I can see the head, and I'm setting the current view as home so that it's easy to get back to. And I also like to import a body. Um, you can import any body that goes with FemShep. I'm just importing somebody's mod right now. Um, that, oh, there goes my computer. Come back to 3ds Max, there we go. Um, and so I'm just importing an armor mod right now, but you can really import any body that works with FemShep that you want. Now I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna import a file, and I've already set up it should be a .nif file. Um, I've already set this up. We're going to do red carpet hair. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's importing from Skyrim. And you can see it kind of imports within Shep's belly. Um, so you want to right click and scale it upward. Um, you'll see this little triangle thing scaling up. You'll need to zoom out with your mouse wheel to see where the hair is at. And then basically what you do is you rotate this so that it's positioned on top of Shepard's head um, in a way that makes sense. And what I like to do is set the Z to minus 90 because that usually gets it right on the spot. And then you'll have to kind of scale it and play with it until it fits pretty closely on Shepard's head. Um, and so just keep going. Sorry, I sound really nasally, I have a cold, but here you see it's kind of just a little wonky. Um, you can set it backwards a little bit. And, oh, it's pretty good. You want to rotate a, a little bit and see that all the pieces of the mesh are in the right places and that there's no cropping. And more. I think it's a hair length too big for the head. Bear with me. And you know you can drag and drop the hair mesh too, but I like to use these little buttons on the bottom because I think it's easier to control. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna press M and this window pops up and I'll double click the mesh or the texture for my hair mesh and you'll want to double click this top green and red box and then select the DDS file for the texture and then you're going to go to this green box and select the DDS for the norm and when I close this window see everything's loaded and you should see hair. Voila! Um, and then if you, you can see that it's like the alphas aren't in play right now and so it's kind of um, a very solid looking hair. So if you want to press M again um, and pull up the, and this is completely optional, but pull up the textures again. Um, if you double click this blue and red box and do image, uh, wait, hold on, wrong box. Blue and red box, click image alpha on the button. Um, and then you'll go here and then set it to blend. Make sure you check the two sided box. And then go back to that red and green um, box. Double click it. Yes. And then shift and drag. So the alpha source should say image alpha. And then you want to go over here and drag a color correction box into it and then set all of these channels to alpha. So, yeah.
all of them. And then you want to connect that dragged box um, to the color correction box. There we go. And then drag the color correction box to the opacity box in the red and blue box. <laughs> um, and then when you close it, you can see the hair, you can see the strands are like a little bit more see-through. Um, you can see how the light's hitting it, so it doesn't look quite as solid. And it looks closer to what it'll look like in-game. And it looks beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the skin, can delete the skin that's already on it, and then go to modifier list and then do a skin wrap. Um, and what we're going to do is wrap that um, hair skin to the body skin. Um, so you can add and then just click on the body. And you can see it takes a little bit to load. Um, and as it's loading, let's see, hair my skin is frozen. There we go. Um, and then you click add to unhighlight it and scroll down and make sure you check weight all points. And again, you might consider a little bit of lag here. Might be faster. I'm using a laptop right now. It's really not set up for 3ds Max, um, but hopefully it'll be faster for you on a real computer. And thinking about it, just really thinking hard about it. Um, I swear it doesn't usually take this long. Okay, so I think that worked. Yep, there we go. Um, and then you want to hit the convert to skin button. And again, this is taking way longer. There we go. And so now you have a skin layer, so you can go ahead and delete the skin wrap. And you'll notice that your new skin, when you click on it, has all of these bones. Woo! So there should be 110 bones for FemShep hair that you are replacing. Um, go ahead and delete the body now. You can also delete the head, but I like to keep it around just for reference when I'm painting the envelopes for the hair. So what that means is you're weighing the hair um, according to the bones. So you're going to hit Edit Envelopes envelopes um, and then let's start with the head which is basically what most of your hair is going to be moving along with is the head bone you want to uncheck paint blend weights and click on the paint weights button and now you should have this and press down on your mouse button and you should be able to shade in the hair mesh um, and you want to make it all red so there we go. And basically what you're doing is saying this part of the hair mesh moves, moves with the head bone. Um, and so you can see I'm stopping like halfway down the ponytail because that's going to be moving with a little, with a different bone. But you can paint out the whole hair if you want because once you move to another bone and start painting it, it'll automatically take it away from the hair mesh um, for the head. So you can do what you want to do makes you happy. But for me, I like to stop like right below the chin. So, here it goes. Almost all red. Um, and so, the yellow and the blue means it's slightly influenced by the head bone, but not fully influenced by the head bone. Um, but, I don't know, not that matters. There you go, that looks about right. Um, and you can see the ponytail goes below um, the neck. So what we want to do, it falls on the left collar. And what we're going to want to do is paint the ponytail so that it moves with the left collar. Um, so, wait, is that left? No, it's right. No, it's left. No, it's right. Okay, the right collar. <laughs> I could tell my sides apart. Um, you can see it's already a little bit blue because of the way we imported the um, skeletons and the skin. Um, but you want to paint it all red. Let's go ahead and do that. And basically you want to do that um, right up past the neckline. So that the blue hits just below the chin area. And doesn't have to be exact. And you're going to have to see how it behaves in-game and probably come back to 3DS Max. And, fix it. Um, and then 
Let's see. So the bottom of this ponytail looks like it's pretty low for the collar, so we want to use one of the chest bones. So here, chest two looks pretty good for that. Um, so what you're saying is like this part of the ponytail is going to be moving with the chest two bone. Um, so there we go. So let's see. And then the very bottom of the ponytail will say we'll move with the chest one bone. Right there, and so basically each part of this hair mesh is going to move with a different bone, um, which is good because in game it means this hair is going to be weighted down and it's not going to clip, um, and it'll basically move with these bones. So I think you're done here, and if you want to go back and look at the head, just to make sure that it's not completely painted over there. See, it looks perfect. Um, Great, so hit edit envelopes again to get rid of that, and then you can go ahead and zoom in home and delete Shepard's face so that all you have is the hair, and looks done, so we're gonna go ahead and export it. So click more on utilities after X. Um, you wanna scroll down and make sure that big smoothing groups isn't checked, and then um, go ahead and figure out what folder you wanna save it in. I'm already in the right folder and then put a name, we're gonna call it red carpet, and it's gonna save the file as a PSK. So click save and okay. Perfect, so now you have your hair mesh. Okay, so you have your PSK, um, you're done with 3ds Max, so go ahead and put that away. And what you wanna do is open up UDK now. Um, this is a step that you don't want to miss because when you're importing um, your new mesh, your new hair mesh into Mass Effect with ME3 Explorer, you need to do it in .UPK or else it's going to be all messed up. You can't just import a PSK. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. Um, but, so go ahead and open up UDK, check the skeletal meshes, box and then right click import and you want to go ahead and import the PSK you just made so let's see red carpet dot PSK there we go um, I'm going to name the package red carpet and hit ok there we go yep and then you want to right click it oh first check that there's the right number of bones so yeah 110 bones and then right click and save, and I would save it in the same folder, so I'm going to call it red carpet, save it as .utk, save, okay, now you're done. Okay, so you are done with the mesh, now let's move on to the texture. Um, you should already have a DDS file of the hair texture that you want to import into Mass Effect. So let's go ahead and open that um, in Photoshop. You're going to need to um, download the NVIDIA DDS extension in Photoshop if you don't have one. But So create a new layer, and what you want to do is um, basically put a dark green layer over it. So fill with dark green, multiply, and plot an image, and then save this as a DDS file and you're going to save it in the DXT5 extension. Um, wow, Photoshop is really crapping out on me right now. Hopefully, there we go. So, DT, or DXT5, um, save, and that should save it as a DDS file that you can use. Okay, great. And so now your texture is all set to import into a text mod file. Um, so what you want to do is open up text mod and go to package build and you should have a text mod dot log file which I'm going to pull up right now and I've already got a preset so here you have um, what you need for the text mod dot mod file so you want to basically edit this so that it redirects to that new texture that you just built. So here we go, that's a folder it's in, I named it redcarpet.dds, and then you go ahead and save that, and that's your log file. So go back to textmod, and I'm going to put in GPG as my creator name, and then call it red carpet, and just hit build, and that should include that one texture to replace your normal hair texture, and then you'll save it into the folder as red carpet, um, and it'll be a TPF file. 
So go ahead and do that. You are done building the texture you need. So everything is all set for you to um, start playing the game with this new mod. So let's check it out.